I don't feel the need to be that spiritual guru with the sound bowls and the alien heritage extraterrestrial. I'm just me and I like nice things. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> That's just me. Exploring the human journey. I'm Sam Rossi. I'm a content creator, author, person who does whatever I want to do. What I like to get across to people when I talk to them is that you really don't have to be doing all the stuff you think you have to do in life. <laughs> At least that was what I believed growing up and ever since this whole like shift into phase two and the new perspectives that I've gained that I'm now teaching to other people through my book, Quantum Networking. It's just been amazing to realize that you could do whatever you want and do what you enjoy doing in life, which for me is luxury. I love food, I love traveling, I love cooking, I love hanging out, having fun, going for walks for hours. You can do all of that and everything will still work out for you. So the theme of quantum networking it is like taking everything that has been used for literally thousands of years and breaking it down into the simplest possible ways to explain how people create their reality. That's my whole thing about what we teach is how simple could it possibly be. I would say my social media background is started in YouTube which was great. I had a whole big YouTube channel with a quarter million subscribers and I did Indian um, reaction content to like Bollywood and music from India and stuff and that transitioned into having a big Instagram following and now a big TikTok following and I've just been on social media for a while now just sharing my life and the things that I like to learn that I like to know with everyone. And one of the coolest things about what we do is when people come back to us and they say, oh my God, I had no idea that it could be so simple to change my entire life and see everything differently and suddenly everything is so easy for me. I just think it's the coolest thing ever to take this ancient information that's in so many ancient texts and obscure books, simplify it and make it so accessible for everyone and share it with the world. What in the world were you thinking when you wrote this book? You're trying to tell people how to live a better life. What in the world? Tell me everything. <laughs> um, well, when Andre and I wrote that book, I was kind of mind blown while I was writing it. I was writing my part and he was telling me his part. And a lot of Andre's part was information I'd never heard before in my life. Mm. So that was a really cool experience. And then I immediately started applying it. And I had even applied some of it leading up to the writing of the book because this was a whole intuitive process. And as I was applying all that, my life was just changing instantly. It mm. was crazy. So as you're, as you're telling this, whatever is coming out of you, it's also adding to your experience. Yes. It, it's not, it's different from a lot of books in, in that it's not a reflection on things I've already gone through. It was kind of a path for me as I was writing it unfolding. Mm. So there's, even when people read it themselves, they're like, there's so much in this that I've never heard before. Mm. It's a whole path. Mm -hmm. And now it's co-written. So explain how you and Andre work together on this. Uh, he was dictating and I was typing his parts and then I would type my own parts out. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've ever seen Andre, he's uh, sight impaired so he doesn't do a lot of typing himself okay yeah so the first part you've got the first part of the story with peter mm -hmm. and then you've got peter passes on his information to andre yep and andre passes his information on to you that you're putting in this book correct um what's the pathway how did you and andre andre f how did you find each other what's the, what's, the, what's the story that's a crazy story uh it's kind of long but basically in 2019, February, I moved out here with my ex at the time, and I was living with him in his parents' house, and I needed to get a job, so I got a job as a waitress, and it was the only job I could find, of course. I went everywhere. Only job was waitressing, and I hated being a waitress. It was my second waitressing job, and I already knew this is the last job that I want to have, mm. but I ended up with it. And so I was like, I got to find something different to do. I, this, this isn't working for me. So I ended up signing up for an online class about sales. Um, and Andre also did, and we happened to be in the same class, the same online class. So we would do these chats on this program called Discord. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, that was how we started talking. He offered to help me with my sales. Mm. And we started talking, took 
our Discord chats to the phone and he eventually helped me leave that relationship that I was in because I didn't have any friends or family here. Mm. No money, just kind of got me a hotel for a week, which was great. And then he ended up getting me a plane ticket to go visit him. And that was the first time we met in person. And I like to joke about how the first day we met in person, we've spent every single day together ever since. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the story of how we met, and there's even more to that, but mm. <laughs> that's well, the general idea. How did you get, part of exploring the human journey is, mm-hmm. you know, how did you get to a point where you're giving information about consciousness, about how to function at the quantum level? I mean, how did you grow up? Were you given a, a specific life narrative? Um, everyone's given, in my opinion, everyone's given a specific narrative that they follow throughout their life. And the question is, do you ever realize that you can question it Mm. or do you just keep following it forever? Mm -hmm. My childhood wasn't special. My upbringing wasn't special. It was very typical, but, uh, everything really changed for me when I read a different book called Busting Loose from the Money Game. Mm. I don't know if you've read that one. I've heard of it. Yeah. That was my first awakening into um, like the quantum information. Everything's a hologram. And I thought that was so cool and yep. so fresh. And I'd already been studying um, manifestation a little bit till that point, And that stuff didn't work for me. You know, the, the high vibration, high frequency positivity stuff wasn't mm-hmm. working. Mm-hmm. So to find another perspective on it was really refreshing. And then I went to Andre and I said, have you ever read this book, Busting the Swim the Money Game? And he read it. And he came back to me and said... Well, I already knew everything in this, <laughs> uh. <laughs> which uh, blew my mind because I had seen part of our relationship story that I didn't get into was that after I went up to visit him, he was living in Pennsylvania at the time in uh, what I would describe as squalor. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it was a really tough three month period mm. uh, for both of us. And we ended up coming back out to Arizona where I had an apartment. Uh, I managed to get one. And he took off. His life changed astronomically within a couple months. Went from no money to six figures to seven figures to eight figures. And I'm watching him do all this while he's just sitting at his computer playing video games. He's not working hard. He's not doing any of the stuff that I had learned you had to do to Uh, be successful. Work hard. Money's hard to get. You got to work hard for it. You got to get a job. You got to work. Yeah, all that stuff. And I'm just so furious and resentful toward him because of what I'm seeing his life blossom into and my life was the same, the same. Mm. I was broke, miserable, crying all day, every day and looking for a way out of that, which is how I got into the manifestation stuff. And then Busting Loose came around and that was when I asked Andre if he read it and that was when he told me he knew about it already. Mm. And at that point I was sold. I was like, tell me more. What do you got for me? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so then you've got to move forward in like learning and growing. So give me that. What was that process like? Fortunately, I had already gone through a lot of the the moving forward growth process. Uh, like I'd mentioned, I was I was crying every day for like three years straight. Mm. Um, very emotional, and that was unbeknownst to me. That was a huge part of the transition process out of what we call phase one and into phase two. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of emotional processing that goes on. So when it finally happened where I was ready to learn from him, I was ready. I had no more emotional processing to do at that time. So everything just started changing for me at lightning speed. Mm. And as we're writing this book, I knew that everyone could use it Mm -hmm. to change their life in some way because it had worked for me already Mm -hmm. over the course of literally weeks. So... So part of quantum networking is resonance. It's, uh, it's, it's the vibrations that are put out. Yeah. And everything at the quantum level is a field of prob- probability based on uh, the observer and the, the consciousness of that observer. So give a feel for when you're saying quantum networking, you know, you've got a picture of a dollar on there. And, mm-hmm. and you know, it, it, it could be lost on someone that it's simply about how to make money, but it's so much more than that. <laughs> So give me a little bit of the the reasoning behind some of the things you, you've got here. Yeah, so I chose a dollar bill because it's not the dollar, but the one that's important here. The fact that the one is the source of everything. A million dollars is just a million ones. A million people is just one million people, you know? You are the source of everything in your experience, and that was the inspiration behind that. Okay, so I love that. So... 
you are the source of everything in your experience. Mm -hmm. For people who have never heard that before, they're like, what? No, I'm a victim. The yeah. <laughs> government says this, or my religion says that, or my partner is this, or my parents, or whatever. The, the, the system is what dictates my joy and happiness. Mm -hmm. Give some education about that. So that whole collection of experiences is what we call phase one. And people always inevitably end up in phase one in their life. Typically in, in childhood, we're in phase two where we're free to do what we want. And we're not concerned about other people's opinions and everything's handled for us. Uh, but then we start learning things from other people, our teachers, our parents, that we take as the truth. And we live our lives by these limitations, these stories. And that forms phase one. So to, to get into phase two or to shift into the phase two perspective is to start questioning all of that, which is what I had mentioned at the beginning, to start asking yourself, is this really how it works? Or why do I, why do I believe this? Mm -hmm. If other people are having this experience, but this is mine, maybe this isn't true. So that's how that works. Yeah. yeah. Well, the book's easy to read. It, mm -hmm. you, you list it out. I mean, e even... Even the the you know the typology of it is very easy to read, and and you've you've got different tips in here. Uh, okay, so I love this part for this yeah. illusion of separation. That is one of the biggest things that I love about consciousness is I am separate from you. Mm. You can hurt me, etc. I am separate <laughs> from God or whatever. Give some presence to that narrative that people have believed that paradigm shift that paradigm for us it's the ultimate game to believe that you're separate from everything that you want yeah. uh it's the ultimate game to create an experience that's so detailed and so captivating that you forget that you're the source of it it's it's like just <laughs> when you can shift your perspective from oh my god all this stuff is happening to me i don't know how to navigate all this i gotta work really hard to wow, I literally put all of this here to distract me from myself, that's when everything opens up for you. So distract, ex explain a little bit about that. Just think of like being on your phone. You know, how often are you just sitting there and you're like, oh, I'll just look at my phone for a minute. It's, it's just something we automatically do a lot of the time. But once you become aware of that, you start to realize, what could I do instead of this? Mm -hmm. And the answer is just pay attention to yourself. Mm -hmm. Everything you do is just to take you away from yourself. Mm. And if you can remember to come back to yourself, so much opens up for you. I love that. Mm -hmm. So part of that for me, the intuitive guidance has been yeah. so important for me. And I was given a narrative that you couldn't trust your feelings. That's how the devil tricks you. <laughs> and so, you know, I was a very, um, uh, that was the narrative that someone told me, which as we move forward, I created an experience for myself mm. to have that. And so I can take ownership of that. Yeah. So when then somebody says, oh, no, that's your inner guidance. Mm. That's how you know what feels good and what you should be leaning into. Because yeah. if it feels good, you should be going that way. And I was told if it feels good, it's probably sin. And the yeah. devil put it there. You know? <laughs> yeah. You know, whatever. I don't drink and I don't smoke and, you know, I don't do things, that, you know, with people and whatever, you know. <laughs> All of those because those are bad and I don't want to be bad. I want to be good, you know. So that was the narrative. Yeah, yeah. It was like, oh. And then I find out, oh, no, it's a vibration. If you feel good, it ripples out. Mm. Give some presence to that inner intuition and that guidance that you share with people. It's always there. But typically we learn things that keep us away from it, like mm. you just described. And that's part of the game. Like none of this is a problem. None of this is is wrong or an issue in any way. This is exactly how this game works. Mm -hmm. You learn things that keep you away from yourself and your feelings and confuse you. And as you become aware of the information that we call phase two, if you ever become aware of it, then you can start to sort things out. But it's only with your personal experience that you can sort things out. If you just keep listening to other people and just absorbing the information and not doing anything with it, you're gonna keep doing what you've been doing. Yeah. A lot of people love that they go to work, they have drama, whatever, they come home, they, ah, oh, I'm back at home. I'm just going to drink beer and yeah. watch Netflix all night. <laughs> yeah. yeah. W tell me about that paradigm. That's just distraction. Like uh, we were just talking about the, the idea that anything is better than just sitting in silence with yourself. Mm. The idea that oh, I need my beer, my liquor to drown my demons and <laughs> silence them. 
is just the perfect story to keep you away from yourself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we take things really seriously and we can be very dramatic, but I don't know. None of us can really say this for sure, but this isn't your only lifetime, you know, like <laughs> you will come back and you will get to do it again. It's not that serious. Do you, are you willing to, are you worth it enough to put the beer down, to put Netflix down, to put the phone down and choose yourself? It's, that's a choice that we all get to make. And a lot of us simply won't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That sitting and getting to be with yourself. Mm. As a practical application, sure. if somebody's like, I don't understand what you mean, Sam, tell me more about that. Yeah. What would you say? I would say set a timer for 10 minutes and just pretend you're in a waiting room with no phone, no magazines, no one to talk to. And then <laughs> things are going to come up. And then what yep. do I do with the things that come up? You just sit with them and feel them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the moment you start thinking, oh, what is this? I got to figure out where this came from. Oh, this is a problem. I should feel this way. That's when you start confusing yourself and going mm -hmm. back to the phase one idea that there's a certain way you should be and certain things you have to do. None of that's true. Why do we create that paradigm? I should be this. To limit ourselves. Mm. It's just one of the many creative ways that we convince ourselves that there's something wrong with us. <laughs> mm. And tell me about that. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Like everything, all this, this messaging that we receive throughout our lives is all about, Oh, you should be this way. And if you don't have all this money in this car, you're, you should work harder. And, even if you're doing well in your business, there's another level you should get to. You're not good enough where you're at. It's all just arbitrary. Like, who decides? If you accept it, then you've decided for you. But none of that is actually true. And you can notice that if you pay just a shred of attention to that. Mm -hmm. Who decides all this stuff? So when you were uh, doing the feature video at the Open, you said you love things uh, that are kind of luxury type of things. You yeah. love to travel. Yeah, you yeah. So you're not telling someone they can't have cool things like that. No. Tell me more about <laughs> that resonance. I like to joke with Mandy about how her focus is on like the, the more consciousness stuff, the non-human stuff. And my focus is really on the human experience, the, the luxury, the sensory stuff. Yeah. So we have different perspectives in that regard. And it's not that Mandy doesn't like that stuff. She does. But I love that stuff mm -hmm. and you can do whatever you want while you're here that's the whole point oh good yeah now, now get me excited mm -hmm. so in this human game that we're playing yeah give me some things that you enjoy playing <laughs> your character oh i love coffee i love going for long walks with my coffee i took mandy and andre to a uh prefix restaurant recently it was their first time going to one a, a fixed price menu they had a lot of fun and so did I. I love, <laughs> I just love like textures and clothes. It was so cool. Um, as I got into phase two, the experience of appreciating myself, which is such a huge element of it, transformed my wardrobe, the way that I um, dress and do my makeup and my nails. I used to bite my nails horribly. Mm. But as soon as I started, appreci started appreciating myself, that just stopped automatically, mm -hmm. just effortlessly. I didn't have to try to fix it. It just, so yeah, that, yeah, all that kind of stuff is mm -hmm. just right up my alley. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A, a lot of people are told to sacrifice what they want mm -hmm. in our order to help someone else. You know, there's no greater love than you sacrifice what you want for another person or sacrifice your life or, you know, that mm -hmm. type of paradigm. Tell me about what you would say to that. I would say, what kind of message does it send to that person that you love to sacrifice what you want to give them what they think they want? Wouldn't it be maybe more loving to show them that they can have what they want and you can have what you want and you'll still love each other regardless? You don't have to, <laughs> you don't have to show your love to your friends and family by giving up on what you want. You can show them that they can have what they want too, and then everyone can get what they want. Mm -hmm. And what we find, what I found, is that me pursuing what I want always fits in perfectly with what everyone else wants too. Mm -hmm. Always. It's never a conflict. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to a restaurant, mm -hmm. and everybody wants different restaurants, what's your method of getting what you want and still <laughs> feeling good about it? Just get takeout. <laughs> everyone could just get takeout. At that point, it's more about the food than sitting at a restaurant, you know? 
Because if it's, if it was about sitting at a restaurant, then maybe everyone would pick the same one. Mm. But if you're worried about what food you're going to get, we'll just get takeout. Mm -hmm. So um, part of your work in the world is you have a platform. You mm -hmm. have you're you're giving information. You're helping people. You're mm -hmm. coaching people. Tell me about that. I um, kind of lean away from a lot of the coaching stuff. I mean, I guess if you count social media, that well, you're you're an influencer. But... You're giving information okay. to people. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> one of the elements of self appreciation is sharing what you learn. So a lot of my content is things that I've learned in the moment, uh, new awareness that I've gained, or if Andre tells me something, teaches a lesson or whatever, I'll go out and make content about that immediately, passing it along to the next person who could use it mm -hmm. instead of just keeping it to myself. Mm -hmm. That's a huge bulk of my content. And um, what what platforms are you on? How do you share this? TikTok and Instagram currently. Mm -hmm. And what's how do people find you? Uh, Sam as a brand is my TikTok username, all one word, and then on, or rather Instagram, and TikTok is your millionaire mentress. Mentress? Mentress. It's the female version of mentor. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, right? Yeah. Well, and, to Google it. Uh, you're hitting a demographic of people that are into technology. Mm -hmm. Some people, as they continue to matriculate uh, through the years, they don't want to change, and they don't want to grow, and they don't want to evolve, and we've seen that evolved through media, uh, social media, the internet age where information is more available. Mm -hmm. What do you think consciousness is doing with technology? Ooh, that's such an interesting question. I think, and this is what I would do with technology, I think that we're going into an era, so to speak, where there's not so much suffering and there's more shared ideas. I think people's suffering, and it's not that I think this, but suffering is a choice. But social media has enabled us to share so many things, ideas, opportunities that I can't help but see it lessening a lot of suffering that people experience in mm -hmm. their lives. Mm -hmm. I think we're supposed to have a lot more fun mm -hmm. coming up. Do you think that the artificial intelligence is going to give people more space and time or is it going to make it where they're more busy? Um, I don't really think about artificial intelligence. Mm. If I had to come up with an opinion about it on the spot, I would say that I've seen it save time for people. Uh, I've not seen any cases where it causes them to spend more time on something, make mm. them busier. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've seen people use ChatGPT mm -hmm. and they write something really fast and then they're like, the employer, they'll be like, oh, well, you did that so fast. Well, Here's a whole bunch of other things you should be able to do really fast too. <laughs> and then there's just like piling it up on them. Oh, that's just being a victim of your boss. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Well, tell me about that. What about people who are like, you don't understand. I have to go to work every day. What do you tell people about that? <laughs> we were just having a conversation about this this morning. That idea that I have to go to work for my paycheck, which is the source of my safety and security, just comes from the story you've accepted that something outside of you is the source of your safety and security. Mm -hmm. Whereas the real source of your safety and security is you. Mm -hmm. You are always the one making decisions about what to do with your life. You are the one receiving the money. If you decide to only receive it a certain way, that's your choice. You know, But money is always there for you. question is, do you realize it? And that's just one example of safety and security. But Yeah, safety and security is the biggest thing mm, people need. Yeah. I want to be safe and secure. Mm -hmm. And that's a religious paradigm, yeah. safe, secure, and a little superior. And that's mm -hmm. a very common thing for religious people to have, you know. Uh -huh. But they're given certainty. If I do the recipe, then I'll be able to have a great life. <laughs> Tell people about that mindset. Oh, if I follow the recipe, then I'll have a great life. Well, what's the recipe? Again, the Bible says, or the scripture says, or the uh, organization says, if I do this, and I, I'm following the things that other people outside myself are telling ah, me. Ah, okay. It, the recipe varies then. It's just what other people have told you to do. Well, you're still not paying attention to yourself. Yeah. You're still following something outside of you. Mm -hmm. And once again, that's the game. That's the game everyone came here to play. How well can you distract yourself from you? How well can you convince yourself that everything out here is more important than what's in here? Oh, so good. Mm. Keep telling people about that because the interior is the most important. Yeah. So every new experience comes with new feelings. Mm -hmm. And if you're not willing to feel new feelings, which of course happen in here, you're not going to feel feelings out here. You're not going to have new experiences. 
And people want to get everything they've wanted out of life, but that's a whole collection of new feelings that you have to be willing to allow yourself to have. So if you're spending all your time distracting yourself and running around and not feeling your feelings, you're just going to have the same experiences, the same experiences that are associated with the feelings you're used to feeling until you can step out of that, take some time to focus on yourself, sit in that waiting room with no distractions and let something new come up that you've never felt before. Such as? It could be anything. Mm. For me, when I was sitting with myself for that three-year period, I had these feelings coming up that were very, if I had to judge them as, I would say heavy. But I didn't know where they were coming from, what they were from. I would tell myself stories about, oh, this is some childhood trauma that I've blacked out. But I don't know that. I'm just making it up. And eventually I did get through it. I literally got to a point where I was like, I'm so bored of crying. Mm. I would literally rather do anything than go sit in my car and cry again. Yeah. Like I'm, I'll just get a puzzle out or I'll go make a sandwich or something. And that was when everything changed for me. Because mm -hmm. I was willing to just feel what was there and not make it a problem. I didn't go get a therapist. I didn't go get someone to help me sort through it. I was just willing to sit with it. Mm -hmm. Just let it be there. Yeah, so many people are averse to that. They're mm -hmm. just like, oh, I don't want to feel my feelings, whether they're going to numb it through substance yeah. or numb it through drama or numb it through uh, entertainment. Mm -hmm. What is the value of feeling that? Of the feelings inside you, whatever they are, so much. It's just new experiences. And the, the interesting thing to me is how effortless the new experiences unfold mm. when you feel your feelings because it's it's the same thing a feeling is an experience and an experience is a feeling there's no difference so when you let yourself feel new feelings you're automatically having a new experience mm. and another interesting thing is that even in this moment right now you can change the experience right now you could say uh, what would it feel like to be angry right now and a feeling will come up in your body or what would it feel like to feel like I am just on top of the world in this moment and something will come up for you. Mm. People don't realize they can do that. Is that a, like a technique or something that we could put ourselves in and put that mindset in? Sure. I mean, you could do it any time. We could do it right now. You want to yeah. try? <laughs> well, I'm, well, when you said you wanted to know what it would feel like to be angry, I was hoping you were going to hit me in the nose or something. <laughs> I don't have to do that. But, I mean, I could. <laughs> no, I want to be it. <laughs> It's just a feeling, you yeah. know. It's just a feeling, Dave. <laughs> yeah. Just go with the pain. Just a feeling. I'm bleeding. <laughs> yeah. Well, so many people are, are not wanting to feel anything. Anything. Why do we not want to feel things? It's intense. It's like, of course, you get used to it. But if you if you aren't willing to do difficult things, things that you've never done before, how are you going to get new experiences? Mm -hmm. You just really got to be willing to do it mm -hmm. and sit with it. And we have some meditations, some exercises, some videos that help people with that. But again, it always, always comes back to, are you worth it or are you not? Mm -hmm. That's a choice that everyone gets to make. Mm. Tell me more about that. If you decide you're not worth sitting with yourself, how could you expect to get more out of life? You well, know, That's a big issue with worthiness. Yeah. A lot of people, they have that I'm unworthy paradigm. Yeah. I'm not even a huge fan of that word the, to introduce the concept of worthiness, but to kind of illustrate the point, like if you can accept that you are the source of everything, even if you think, if you think negatively about yourself or whatever, at some point you might be like, okay, well, let's just see where this will take me. If I'm the source of everything, all right, fine, I'll sit with myself. And it may be uncomfortable at first, but eventually you'll get used to it. And maybe you'll even start to like it. One of the big things that helped me on my journey here with phase two was actually letting myself enjoy the feeling of sitting with myself instead of being like, oh, I got to do this. Just uh, feeling mm. these feelings. It can feel nice. And that ties in with the exercise I was just talking about where you can literally change the perspective you have, the emotional feeling perspective on any experience just with awareness. Mm -hmm. So if you're sitting there and it's very uncomfortable and you're kind of wanting to crawl out of your skin, just switch it. Mm. Relax, take a breath, mm -hmm. open up to it. I have family members that would say, your feelings are not important. Hmm. The important thing is to adhere to uh, a, a narrative that what the Bible says you have to do or something like that. <laughs> what is it about that 
that they're creating? What is that experience within them that they don't want to say that they are responsible? They want to say God is responsible. <laughs> what is that paradigm all about? Oh, man. I, I'm i not religious. I'm not Christian. So I'm not super familiar with people's experiences in that regard. But to blame God for your experiences is just to blame something outside of yourself. Same thing as blaming your doctor, your teacher, your dog, anything. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're blaming or whatever. What is the paradigm that we want to blame something outside of ourselves? Well, that would be phase one, you know, the victimhood paradigm, the idea that, well, I can deal with this as long as I'm not responsible. Mm -hmm. it, if I'm responsible for this, I can't handle it. I don't know. I, it's too much. <laughs> so that victim paradigm is so delicious for a lot of people. It's, yes. Why do you think we create that as a paradigm, a victim paradigm? For the game. Mm -hmm. So tell me about that. If everything was just handed to you, like if you're born and you have these dreams and desires that you want and everyone's aware of it and everything's handed to you on a silver platter and people are like, okay, you want this? This is going to happen for you at this age. It's going to be amazing. And then this is going to unfold next. And it's just everything you want for the rest of your life. Congratulations. Welcome to earth. Then how could you really appreciate those experiences? How could you find out what you're really capable of? How could you grow and discover not just the pleasure, but also the contrast to that? If there's no contrast, what even is pleasure? Mm -hmm. There's no pain. How could you recognize pleasure? Mm -hmm. If you're just happy all the time, you would become numb to it eventually. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> the victimhood. Yeah. I mean, how do you feel an orgasm if you're always in an orgasm? Right. Yeah. You, you have to have the not orgasm. Shut it off. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So the victimhood thing is kind of like you sort of have to go through it in order to experience not being a victim, to experience the joy. Uh, you know, sometimes it's less than joyful, but that's totally normal to experience the pleasure and joy of, wow, I did that for me. I did that for me. It's mm. legit. <laughs> and yeah, you know, that the, for me personally, the transformation from blaming my parents and blaming you know, childhood trauma that I didn't remember and all this stuff to, wow, if I focus on myself, I can do anything. It's so delicious. Mm. It's really nice. So some people uh, with that mindset of, you shouldn't focus on yourself, you should focus on God, or you should focus on a religious narrative. Why Why is that such a pervasive thing? Because that's a real thing, you should sacrifice yourself for the good of another person. I would say that's pervasive because that's, again, the whole point of the game. Mm. Like without those messages, and those messages come in tons of different forms. There's a different one for every religion, a different one for every income level, a different one yeah. for everything, every country. Without those stories, that's the contrast to the freedom. You know, that the stories are the contrast to the freedom. If you don't move through the stories and see how you've tricked yourself, you can't appreciate not tricking yourself anymore. Mm -hmm. So everyone has some version of that, whatever it is, and you're supposed to. Mm -hmm. So don't beat yourself up about it. You don't have to shame yourself or get mad at your parents for telling you what they did. All you have to do is question it mm. and be open to not knowing the answer. And tell me about that questioning and not knowing the answer because we love certainty. We That's love what it. <laughs> most of us are seeking a certainty. I are certain I have money, yeah. certain I have a relationship yeah. and what safety and security, yeah, yep. certainty. Uh, to be okay with not knowing <laughs> is one of those feelings. It's it's a feeling that most people won't let themselves feel. They mm. have to know. Mm -hmm. For me that was a huge thing, having good grades and being smart. And knowing all the answers to all the questions on Jeopardy and Cash Cab and stuff. <laughs> that was a huge part of my wow. childhood. Wow. Yeah. So when I had to accept that I didn't know how life worked, it was it was a bit to overcome. Mm. But it was just an emotional process. It was just like you cry about hitting your head and then you get over it. Mm -hmm. You cry about, oh, I was lied to and then you get over it. Mm. It's just. what what are the, How did you get over that? That having things happen that or maybe outside of your control because you're a child or, you know, you know, there's a lot of people that have some various levels of trauma in their mm -hmm. lives. And they're like, you don't understand, Sam. I have this egregious this thing happened. happened to me. Yeah, let me tell you my story. So, <laughs> I mean, and you've got a perspective on that. Mm -hmm. We like to say to, to focus on anything about the past and bring it into the future is just to keep it alive. Oh. And it could be tough for people to hear, but 
you really don't need to keep talking about your trauma. It won't do anything for you. It is not the answer to any of your questions. You just think it is. So if you're willing to just simply stop talking about it and move on and live in the present moment where no trauma is happening, you can be free. Mm. But every time you make that decision, oh, but this happened to me and this is why I'm like this. Oh, but this happened and this is why I'm like this. You don't understand am I like this because this happened. You're just choosing to be that way. So you're staying in that energy. Then. You're staying in the energy. You're staying in the mm. past. You're keeping something alive that has been long dead. Mm -hmm. And that's a choice. Yeah. Part of what your work is, specifically that I've read through this these pages, mm -hmm. is you got to feel good. You got to accept. You got to love yourself. And you got to be in a space of a vibration where abundance can come to you and it doesn't have to be in a certain form. Mm. And a lot of people think that, well, if I do these things, I'll get more money. Mm. But abundance can be so much more beyond money. Yeah. Talk about that. Abundance is everything. It's just the natural state of things. There's infinite everything. <laughs> and I think a lot of people don't realize that. Like if you've ever walked into a grocery store, have you actually noticed how many choices you have? Mm -hmm. How much food there is? And walked into the parking lot and noticed how many cars there are and how everyone has their own car? Tons of people you can talk to. If you've ever started a business but you've not realized that every single person out here is a potential client for you, of course you miss out on abundance and you're just focused on the money. But when you can expand your perspective to, wow, there's infinite everything, <laughs> that's when you can start to notice, where am I getting the idea that anything is limited? Mm. I must be making it up mm -hmm. <laughs> and telling myself that story and yeah. buying it as the truth. What would you tell a person that mm -hmm. she's desperate to find a partner and she, she mm -hmm. wants a partner more than anything, someone that will love her and tell her that she's the best? And what do you say mm -hmm. to that person that wants that love in her life so much mm -hmm. or his life so much? Mm -hmm. That wanting is really just the avoidance of a feeling that you already have. The wanting is thinking that having a different experience will fix your life or make your life better in some way. It won't. This is why people do all sorts of traveling and never stay home for very long. They think that they're running away from something or they're finding themselves or being free, but it, they're never satisfied because they're constantly running from the problem, which is just how they feel within themselves. So in the case of relationships, if you were to just accept the feeling, whatever it is, just take do the waiting room exercise that we described earlier. And whatever comes up, just sit with that, just observe it. What you'll find is that obsessive desire for a relationship that permeates every thought you have starts to fade. You become okay with your life as it is now. And then one day you find someone and it's just like, this was the easiest thing I've ever done mm. in my life. But it's because you were willing to just feel the feeling that was already there that you're avoiding seeking a relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the thing. Uh, you know, sex and money are the two big things. Everybody's yeah. like, I don't have enough sex or money or relationship or whatever. Yep. You know, uh, what do you say to those people? Those are the two main attractions of the human game. <laughs> you got it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, those are the two things that people have the most excitement around. Mm -hmm. Very interested in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is it about the paradigm of entertainment that we're so invested into? Well, you mean like uh, the news and social media and things? It all. Entertainment? Entertainment. Distraction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, uh, but also, you know, distraction, but also experiences. None of these things are problems. You mm -hmm. can certainly enjoy social media, enjoy the news if you want to do that. It's not my, not my top choice. Not my top choice either. <laughs> There's nothing there for me. I literally will be going through the news or on my phone or watching something online. I'm like, there's nothing here for me. Yeah. This is super sad and depressed. There's <laughs> nothing here for me. Exactly. Yeah. There's certainly nothing wrong with, with watching the news, watching social media, going to Vegas to see a show. Any of that is just part of the human game. The question is, are you aware of when you're using it as a distraction or are you just doing it to do it? Are you watching social media because you actually would like to sit there and observe social media? Or are you looking at it because you're trying not to feel a feeling? And you know this. Mm. Everyone knows this. Mm -hmm. Whether or not they recognize that they know it is a different story. And so you're saying the distraction from feeling the feeling mm -hmm. is what too many people are invested in. Yes. 
And if they feel their feelings, what do they unlock? Everything. Tell me more. Everything. I've found through personal experience that the things that unfolded in my life effortlessly after I felt all my feelings, and there's always more feelings, but at that period in time, were things that I didn't even know I wanted. Things that I didn't even know were even possible. Everyone comes up with things that they want, but typically those things are within the realm of what they think is realistic or possible. But different things can happen outside of that. And you may be like, wow, I didn't even know this, this could be my life. Mm -hmm. And that's my experience mm -hmm. all the time. I used to believe fully that I would have to have like a corporate job, save up, retire at 65. If I'm lucky, then I got some money saved. Had no concept that I could just do whatever I want to do every day mm -hmm. and just make money without doing anything to make it just existing, breathing, mm. money comes in. Mm. Didn't know it was possible, but mm. it is because I was willing to sit with myself and feel my feelings. So your feelings led you to a space of income creation. My feelings allowed me to get out of my own way. Mm. Feeling my feelings got out of my own way. Yeah, that whether you want to call it income creation or whatever. If everything is naturally abundant and everything just flows, you know, rain just falls, trees get water, however they get water so they can survive, just nature, then money must also be flowing the same way. We like to compare it to the blood in your veins. Nobody has to try to get their blood to flow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no so one has to try. Yeah. Oh, is it flowing? Mm -hmm. I gotta go to work, you know? That's no funny. one has to do that. <laughs> It's just flowing. It's mm -hmm. the same with money. Mm -hmm. The only thing you could do is get in your own way and be like, oh, well, I'm not going to have enough. I need this paycheck. My money only comes from my job. All of those ideas that you buy into and put energy into just cut the flow off. Just mm -hmm. the same way as squeezing your arm cuts the flow off. So if someone's sitting there going, okay, well, how, how do I live with money being around me? I mean, mm -hmm. how, how, what, am I, what <laughs> happens? How do I do that? How do I just have money? Mm -hmm. <laughs> just have money? Um, you just have money. So money and energy feelings are the same thing. It's all the same. It's just energy. If you can sit with your feelings, if you can hold that without running away and making a sandwich and distracting yourself, then you can also hold money. But the issue for a lot of people is that they can't sit with their feelings. So every time they have extra money in their account, they got to get rid of it somehow on some silly thing, whether it's something that they've wanted or an expense that pops up, you're creating all the unexpected expenses that pop up in your life, whether mm -hmm. you realize it or not. Mm -hmm. Are you trying to get rid of your money or are you okay with keeping it? Mm. Are you trying to get rid of your feelings or are you okay with keeping them? Mm. So all it comes back to the feelings. All comes back to the feelings. Mm -hmm. Part of the human experience is the feelings as we come here. Mm -hmm. and I hear a lot of the pre-birth planning dialogue that mm. um, people will have in these spaces of meditation and they'll be like yeah i chose this life i chose this partner i chose this pathway and it's all about uh, before we come here in that life between life space it's about creating some ideas mm. oh these are some ideas but then we come here to actually put them into practice mm. and so part of that is the feelings the human experience mm -hmm. and if you're unwilling to feel things that you're uncomfortable with, you're missing out on experiences. So much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We like to say the, the creative triangle is made up of thoughts, feelings, and actions. And the, the thoughts that you have are tied to the feelings and the actions that you take are also tied to feelings. It's all just connected. So if you think about your ideas and you take action on your ideas, but you don't feel your ideas or you don't feel what's present for you, you're just missing out on mm. part of the triangle. Therefore, you can't create what it is you're looking to create. Mm. Do you have um, training information or do you have something that you've put together? Is it your book? You know, How do people find out more about that type of thing? The book is definitely the place to get started, Quantum Networking, but we also have a uh, Quantum Wealth community online that we love. It's the source of all of our information so people who are members can get everything that we know. How does one sign up to be a member? There's a link under this video, probably. <laughs> I can send you that link and we can distribute it, however. Cool. Mm -hmm. And so if I want to be part of the quantum networking group, is that what you, it would be? The quantum or? wealth community? Quantum yeah. wealth community. Yeah, yeah. And I've signed up on there. Mm -hmm. What is that going to do for my life? It gives you a place to talk about this stuff, mm -hmm. whereas you may not feel like you can talk about it with your friends and family because you'll come up with it's a cult or they don't know what they're talking about or yep. you should just get a job 
So that's my favorite thing about the community. Aside from all the courses and all the master classes and all the content in there, which is obviously valuable, my favorite thing is that you can say whatever you want. Post whatever you want, any questions. If you wanted to write a post that's all just swear words, post it, go ahead. If that makes you feel something, then do it. Oh, yeah, if your intuition like tells you to just insult everyone under the sun in your post, post it. Hmm. Yeah, see what happens for you when you do that. Hmm. Now, I, I've enjoyed the feeling of feeling good and I feel expansive. Hmm. And I haven't enjoyed the feeling of feeling bad and I feel closed in. Hmm. Explain that. <laughs> One of the things that I credit for my uh, moving through those three years of, of suffering that I went through was this book called Existential Kink. And essentially in that book, the author talks about how you can literally get off to your problems. And, you know, I, I totally started using it. I started teaching it. That was one of my first um, uh, coaching experiences, community experiences. But what most people don't know is that you can actually have an orgasm to thinking about <laughs> your problems. Mm -hmm. um, a funny story I like to tell is when I was experimenting with that, I found that thinking about getting picked last for a dodgeball team oh. or like not being good enough <laughs> was just wow. earth shatteringly <laughs> orgasmic. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So you actually wanted to have that feeling. Yeah. We all do. We just bullshit ourselves into believing that it's like a problem. Mm. There's something wrong with us when getting picked last for a dodgeball team or getting bullied or, or getting beaten or something is really just exciting and a perfect reflection of how we see ourselves and who we're being in that moment. It must be. Mm. It always will be. So when you get that validation, it's kind of like, I knew it. I knew it. Mm. And like we've already talked about, people love to feel like they know things. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you have to say to someone who says, yeah, Sam, but you don't know my life. You don't understand. You don't hear this all the to. time. Yeah. I really don't need to know your life. I mean, that always comes back to you. Are you willing to try something different? Are you willing to do something different than what you've been doing? Or are you just going to brush this off and go on to the next thing, looking for another answer? Mm -hmm. I don't need to know your life. Have you ever felt your feelings? No? Well, start with that and tell me what happens. What if, you were, what if someone told you that their feelings are sad and <laughs> depressed and lonely, and et cetera, et cetera? Those are judgments. Those are labels. That's where the complication starts to come in. And that's a huge element of quantum networking. The book, we introduced the idea that all the complication and all the difficulty and all the confusion that you have and all the limitation comes from your judgments, comparisons, and expectations. If you let go of those and you stop labeling your feelings, which is just judgments and comparisons, oh, I'm angry. This is not as fun as being happy. Oh, I'm happy. This is better than being sad, whatever. If you eliminate all that and just feel, it's way easier <laughs> to just do that. Mm. You you let go of the oh I gotta not have, I gotta not feel my feelings right now because I'm sad, and you are left with I have a feeling. Then what? Mm. Go sit with it. Mm -hmm. How do you translate the feelings, the sad or the depressed, or how do you translate that into? something that creates a better life for yourself what people find when they become more comfortable with their feelings in general after they've practiced sitting with themselves is that you can use that energy to do anything you don't have to just constantly sit and do nothing that's like the beginner part that's just getting used to the waiting room just existing once you're comfortable with that and you notice so oh, i have this energy this feeling right now you can ask your intuition what do we do with this? And something will come up and whatever comes up, you will have the energy to do it right then and there. Mm, mm -hmm. You don't have to force yourself because you've already got that energy. And it's mm -hmm. just the feeling, any feeling, mm -hmm. whatever you name it. So you're mastering the idea of feeling your feelings, putting that into a space where then you can manifest things. You're mastering your energy mm. and everything is just energy. Mm -hmm. When you let go of or you move through the energy of limitation and blockage and stuckness and ah, uh, this isn't working for me, I can't have this, I don't have this, you open yourself up to new things. Then they just happen effortlessly like we talked 
talked about. Yeah. Yeah. There's no need to force anything to happen. Mm -hmm. A lot of manifestation teachings involve force, mm. some level of, oh, I got to take action and force myself to feel I good. Like that, yeah. yeah. The action is just for awareness. This is a huge, this, when I learned this, it blew my mind. When your intuition tells you to take an action, it's not because that action leads to results. That's a phase one story. When your intuition tells you to take an action, or shows you rather, that action will give you self-awareness, the self-awareness that you need to have a different experience, mm. to have the experience you're seeking. So that changed everything for me. Hmm. That's really powerful. That's yeah, a powerful. It's a big shift. That's a powerful way to frame that. Mm -hmm. uh, I love it. Do you do a podcast? Do you have anything that you people can listen to you regularly? Uh, yeah, live streams on social media. I mm. go live at 10.30 a.m. Mountain Standard Time on TikTok and 11.30 on Instagram. I love it. Mm. So that's a, that's a place where people can find out more of what you're doing. What do you share on that? What type of things? Tons of stuff. Yeah. Uh, vlogs about my days, things that I learned from Andre or from self-awareness that I gained from my intuition, Oops, whatever. <laughs> mm -hmm. What gives you juice? What keeps you motivated and passionate? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> I would say the awareness that everything is possible for mm. me. One of the biggest shifts, and this is a huge source of motivation and inspiration for me, was the shift from, I don't know if I can do it, to, oh, it's inevitable for me because I'm just me. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. That was a huge shift. And I think people will get there when they start, but... Again, that's not something you can just force mm -hmm. and be like, oh, I'll get, it's inevitable. It's like mm -hmm. an affirmation. Mm -hmm. No. Are you living your best life now? <laughs> For sure. Yes. What this are, is just the beginning. Tell me more about that. I mean, like this, this is a life beyond anything I thought possible already. Mm -hmm. And I've only been doing this for a little over a year. Mm -hmm. Typically a mentorship like, like Peter's mentorship or Andre's mentorship typically lasts three years. So I'm only a third of the way through it mm. and I'm already like, wow, this is so cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. And you're ripple affecting that to other people. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's people that now are like, oh, and they're starting to ride that wave, so to speak. Yes. Like Deneen just had her first 10K month, one of our mentees, which is amazing. It's a big it. thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a life changing number for some people. That is for me when I had that experience, that was the awareness that money does not have to be difficult. Mm, I love it. Mm -hmm. What do you want people to learn and to understand from the things that you're doing in the world? What do you want? What what gives you joy from the things you're doing? What I mean, does teaching people? I mean, because you're kind of a thought leader in this. Does that give you joy? Yeah, I love it when people send me messages about how awesome things are. Mm. <laughs> Who wouldn't? You know. Mm -hmm. um, we get a lot of that in the community. So that's, yeah, that's definitely great to hear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So your, uh, your life has evolved to the space in which now you're learning, you're bringing things on. What else is it that you're thinking or hoping that you want to incorporate in the life you're living now? I, this is an interesting question. Um, I really want to lean more into the luxury experiences side of things. And I don't, I don't really know what that looks like, but that is something I'm, that's an expansion point for me mm -hmm. to lean into that because well, I, I, this would probably be just some made up bullshit, but my story is that, you know, the, the working class background that I came from is kind of like, wait, is this really for me, you know, in that regard? But mm. <laughs> Like I said, it's an expansion point and we're always becoming aware of new areas where we're still limiting ourselves to an extent. Mm. And if you were to have a vehicle to drive that was a luxury vehicle, what would that be for you? The Lexus LC500. <laughs> <laughs> you knew yeah, exactly what it I was. I knew it immediately. There's only a few of them in Scottsdale that I've seen and nobody has the color that I want. So you're yeah. going to share that? Orange. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what kind of orange? It's like a, it's like a blaze orange. Um, yeah, it's just beautiful. And you can see it when you close your eyes? Yes. Mm. Yeah. And then so the feeling of being in that car, mm -hmm. how do you radiate that out? I don't. That's kind of the expansion point for me right now. Yeah. So, I mean, if I did, I would have the car already, you know, but I am 
moving into that space. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's fun to have new things. Like, I used to be, you know, this is just the way it is. And I got to do this so I can eventually get to where I'm going. And very kind of small-minded, limited. But as I've expanded past that, I've found that it's actually really fun to have things that are exciting and scary and interesting. Mm. Not... Well yeah. Well, part of that, this, oh boy, this, the energy of this planet is like going through obstacles and mm. trying to overcome them and or, or try to get past limitations. Yeah. Why do you think that's set up like that? For fun? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, for fun. I mean, if you think about like consciousness being an unlimited being or God or whatever word you want to use, if you're an unlimited being, what's the one thing that you can experience? Limitation. Limit. Limitation. Yeah. Limitation. Uh, so you would create that experience for yourself and convince yourself that you're only limited because mm -hmm. it wouldn't work if you created limitation but also knew that you were unlimited mm -hmm. it's, it just invalidates the whole thing thus the veil of forgetfulness yes the, the illusion of separation the illusion of separation exactly the victimhood pro problems and traumas and dramas we get ourselves into i'm so certain it's a problem <laughs> yeah yeah and it's probably for entertainment purposes mm -hmm. yeah uh, i what do you think about the other universe expanding ideas of planets and beings elsewhere? How do you feel that you fit into that paradigm of Earth versus some other planet? I have no idea. <laughs> um, this is just my Earth experience right now. I couldn't even tell you. Hmm. Yeah. So have you ever been in a meditative state or some awareness altering space where you've experienced something else? Yeah, um, I haven't gone really deep into that. Like I said, that's kind of Mandy's interest. I think it's cool, whatever, but I'm not dying to do it. But I've had experiences where <laughs> there was this one time, oh my God, um, there was this, this instant energy shift here in the apartment. Like in an instant, the energy was just totally different. And it was like, there was this weird looking cloud right above us. I went outside and looked. And it was like, you know, that there's some beings there that you can't see. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that was a cool experience. I fully believe that there's aliens, if you want to call them that. And Well, we like to say extraterrestrials. Extraterrestrials. Yeah, whatever word you want to use. <laughs> Other yeah. beings yeah. fully believe that they interact with us. And What do you think that dimensional shift is between the other entities and the human form and not having that direct contact in the 3D earthly realm, right? I mean, like, they're not on the news or whatever. I mean, a lot of people are like, I know they're real, but they're not, they didn't land on the White House lawn as of the date this was filmed. <laughs> so Maybe they did. Maybe they did. <laughs> what do you think that shift is? Awareness. Hmm. Uh, if you were to talk to Andre, he would tell you about Second Sight, which is his expansion of awareness to the extent where he can see consciousness, I guess. He can see people who are asleep, and he can also see people who are just not there, mm. like space fillers, NPCs, as you may call them. Um, which I think, if I'm not mistaken, he can also see beings. So if you were to allow yourself to have that awareness, I think you could fully see that. Mm -hmm. It's just awareness. You're really just becoming aware that you're everything. Mm. Well, the regression teachers are saying that the soul grows and learns different lessons on different places, whether it's the Palladians or Arcturians mm. or whatever. And oh. then they'll say those are, you know, the first lessons the soul learns as it's growing and developing and evolving and having experiences. And then <laughs> people come to Earth because oh. it's really challenging here, you know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's more Mandy's realm. I don't pay attention to any of that stuff. <laughs> Which is another thing I really appreciate about how about my social media and how we teach this. I am not, I don't feel the need to be that spiritual guru with the sound bowls and the alien heritage, extraterrestrial. I'm just me and I like nice things. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that's just me. Well, I love the authenticity. But, yeah. Thanks. You know, you're, you're, you're very firm and secure in who you are mm -hmm. and you feel like a person that has a level of wisdom that you've gained and you want to share it with others. Yeah. So I love that. Thanks. Do you feel like you're on the right path 
doing the things you want to do or is there something else you would want to in integrate with it? I have used this metaphor before riding a bike. I feel like I'm on my bike, but I'm not fully comfortable riding it yet. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think that my path is still, I'm still becoming aware of it, mm -hmm. which is cool. That's, that's what I was talking about earlier with the whole, there's something new and exciting for me that I get to lean into that I'm kind of like, Ooh, I don't know. So in that regard, yeah, I would say my path is kind of there, but I'm like, Ooh, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And if someone wants to get the book quantum networking, where do they go? You can get that uh, paperback from Amazon, Kindle Direct Publishing. I'm sure I can provide you with the link. Or you can get the ebook copy with an audiobook that I recorded via my social media. If someone's been listening and they're like, I love everything you're saying, I'm going to get in contact with you, I want to follow you. Mm -hmm. But mm, there's just, mm, I want to know, is it real? What would you say to that person? <laughs> is it real? What is real? Like, <laughs> A lot of people say a lot of stuff <laughs> yeah. and they promise a lot of things mm -hmm. that don't get fulfilled. Yeah. A lot of people spend money buying courses and programs and workshops and things. Yeah. Well, we like to say that it's never the course or the workshop that's the problem. It's your inability to implement any of the things you learned. Yeah. So in this regard, what I would do is give somebody a simple exercise that they could just do um, just to see what happens. That's really how people can use this information to their benefit. If you just listen to this and you listen to all our content and do nothing with it, it's not going to work for you. So what's that exercise? Feel your feelings. Oh. <laughs> and an example of that is setting a timer for 10 minutes in a room and just feeling yeah. your feelings. Yeah, pretend you're in a waiting room with no distractions. There's no magazines, there's no phone, there's no TV, there's no people. You're just sitting there. Most people can't do more than 20 to 30 seconds. And if you realize, wow, I literally can't sit still for 20 to 30 seconds, you might realize that your life is the way it is because mm. that's how you are. And then to get that person on a path of self-discovery. That's where paying attention to yourself comes in. That's, that is self-discovery. To sit there and realize, wow, I can't sit here with no distractions for 30 seconds. That's when it's like, oh my gosh, what am I even doing mm. with my life? But, you know, people may have done that. They may have sat and then picked up their phone and not realized that that's what they're doing. In this exercise, this 10-minute waiting room exercise, you're meant to become aware of what you can do mm. in terms of your feelings mm, how long you can sit. I love it. Well, thank you for a great conversation. Yeah. Thank you for helping co-author Quantum Networking. My pleasure. It's a great book. Um, at the end of this, someone's watched everything you've had to say. Mm -hmm. You've said a lot of wonderful things. What is the one thing you want to make sure people take away with this conversation you've had today? Hmm. Ah, everything you think you know is a lie. <laughs> That's fine. Everything you think you know is a lie. Tell me what you mean by that. Everything you think that you know is a lie. And where does the lie come from? Wherever you accepted it from. Okay. <laughs> Even like this experience here. What is there really a table there? We're about to unlock a whole new conversation. You want to start a whole brand new episode? <laughs> no, it's just something to think about. What I would say is feel how you feel when I say that. Pay attention to your feelings when you hear those words. I love it. Yeah. I'm right with you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, my friend, for creating a wonderful conversation. My pleasure. Thank you. To you, I say. This is great. Namaste. Namaste. Thanks for joining us here on Exploring the Human Journey. For more information, go to the website at exploringthehumanjourney.com.